Let me know if you're ready. Once you're ready. Yep, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let me share my screen. So your lab is ready? Uh, I would say 60% ready. It's still, the main part is ready. I just have to set up the B side and the DMZ. But the main one, the management area is ready and the server side is ready. Okay. You mean uh, we can do the AD integration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So what we will do, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I am. Okay. So we'll call uh, VPN, theoretical part. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go to the IDP awareness, uh, AD integration. Okay. Theoretical part and the lab. Okay. Uh, let me show you. So far, uh, we have covered almost everything. Okay, sounds good. Okay. But also, uh, if you perform whatever the labs, mm -hmm. and if you come across any question, yep. we'll solve that. Definitely. That is, uh, you know, uh, the bonus things I have for you. Okay. okay. So maybe uh, we try to finish course content today. Mm -hmm. And uh, once your lab is ready, this week is ready, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, next week we'll see. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll try to, uh, I mean, we'll try to break it, try to see uh, things. Definitely. And, uh, ping me if you come across any issue, any doubt. Yeah, you know? that's, that's the real part. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, I address that. Yeah, definitely. So let's start with the VPN. VPN, uh, I mean, uh, you have any idea on VPNs? It's virtual private network. Um, basically, the traffic which goes within the within that tunnel is encrypted, and and uh, there is two phases to it. There is a phase where the connection is set up. And then the second phase where the traffic of the data is transferred. That's um, that's the basic understanding of what I know of the VPN. Right. So tunnel is created. Do you think any particular applications for why we use VPNs? Um, so if you want to connect from home to your corporate network um and you don't want to use you're using public network so you you still want to be secure uh during the my and the transfer so that's the main reason why vpn vpns are used because you don't want to have dedicated uh you don't want to pay for the dedicated line If you say secure, what that means? Means end to end, it's encrypted. Where if somebody were to get the get get the packet, um, or or do something like the man in the middle or anything like that, they won't be able to in to read their contents without the the key. Right. Encryption. Encryption we use, right? Mm -hmm. We use hashing also. These are the terms which we use in a cryptographical world. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying uh, these are the things which we can use for uh, protecting the data. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so basically, VPN. Uh, is a virtual private network which used to protect uh, 
store end-to-end -end connectivity between your one source uh, to the destination or a public network. Mm -hmm. And the connectivity is via tunnel. So when we say tunnel, that means uh, uh, we create a secure environment from where what are the packet transfer from this source to the destinations. Mm -hmm. uh, the packets, for example, the communication I, I have initiated from here, mm -hmm. those packets are encrypted, mm -hmm. okay, and they will decrypt to the destination, mm -hmm. and then it will read by the end machine. Mm -hmm. But performing the encryption and the decryption, we need to have some, you know, countermeasures and technology in between, mm -hmm. right? So one of the gateways or a checkpoint gateway or whatever the firewall purpose is VPN. So this gateway who actually use to perform the encryption and decryption. Okay? Mm -hmm. And as you say, the settings, so that settings for this encryption decryption is delivered by this gateway. Without this device, there is uh, no VPN. So we need to have something here, okay, to protect these things. So there are multiple scenarios here. We call it like a, a VPN deployment scenario. So are you still with me? So as I said, uh, the packet need to be encrypted and decrypted from one place to another place. Yep. Okay. Sometimes we have an option that only one place the packet will, you know, uh, get encrypted and decrypted, uh -huh. depending on the situation. So we call it like a VPN deployments, like how we can deploy the VPNs, right? Okay. So number one, we call it a site-to-site -site VPN. Okay. And number two, we call it as a remote access VPN. You heard about this term before? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by site to site VPN? Site to site is like um, you have a client on your computer. Well, it's not, uh, well, I'll take that back. Site to site is like you have two sites. Uh, I would say there's a corporate site and a uh, maybe I, uh, I may be wrong on that, uh, but site to site is like there's two sites, um, one let's say Dallas and one um, New York, and they both have a site to site. Anything behind the site uh, are the clients um, uh, behind the site, and uh, remote access VPN is where your computer has a client and it connects to a maybe a gateway which is a remote access vpn i may be wrong but that's just yeah, yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're right i mean you you have your fundamental with you so oh. yeah correct. it's a uh, uh, site to site vpn you have a uh, two sites uh and remote access vpn you have a pc uh, or whatever the system and you are connecting to the corporate gateway or whatever the gateway you have oh. so do you think why we have two solutions? Why one we have like a site to site VPN, which is look like this? Okay, yeah. So remote access VPN is for mostly for thin client kind environment where the user is far away from uh, from a corporate network or something like that, where a remote access VPN is used. But a VPN site to site is where, like connecting two main hubs or ma main corporate offices. Right. So basically, uh, imagine the situation that uh, uh, this is your uh, one office where you are sitting now, so it's an R wing. And here you have another office which is in a Bangalore. So, uh, how this 
your team you know able to access the sources from this side okay securely and there is a multiple you know say different connections all together or a different pcs or different uh, many uh, different servers whatever it is in an internet network you have this side likewise you have internal network on the other side as well okay how you both you know able to access this without you know any mm -hmm. performance issue without any security constraint without anything mm -hmm. there are multiple solutions available one you know you can go for the you know expensive solution where you have you know your dedicated connections mm -hmm. but that is not possible for this long distance but provided if you are within some area range and you are you know able to do that like a lease line something like that mm -hmm. but the vpn provides the flexibility where you can connect both the sides seamlessly so from this side you know you will be you know able to access whatever the things this side has okay vice versa mm -hmm. but how we can configure that there is a requirement for these things so you need to have two gateways to have this to be in place right Correct. one gateway you need to have at your place and one gateway you need to have the other side place when you sitting in the Dallas Irving and you're doing something from there, you call it local gateway because it's local to you. Uh huh. Yeah. And you are accessing Bangalore side, you know, uh, uh, network. And what are the gateway we have at the Bangalore side? We call it as the remote yeah. gateway. Got it. Okay. Now, let's understand some terminology. This is a gateway. Okay. This is a gateway. In VPN terms, we call it peers. Okay. One peer is another peer. Okay. So from here, you are connecting to. I mean, from this peer, you are connecting to this peer. Got you it. got my point. Yeah. yeah. In a terminology. Yeah. Right. Now, this thing. These are the PCs, servers, whatever you have configured, you know, behind this gateway. Uh -huh. This thing we call it as encryption domain. Oh, got it. Okay. Anything behind the, behind the peers. Right. Encryption domains are something which actually sends and receives the data. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, between two encryption domain, we need to enable the communication. So mm -hmm. when you perform the VPN settings, you have to define the encryption domain. Oh, okay. And here, how? your gateways come to know from where we need to have the communication to whom there mm -hmm. has to be something need to be defined mm -hmm. if you're defining this to the local gateway mm -hmm. we call it as a local encryption domain mm -hmm. and when we define same thing on the remote gateway we call it remote encryption domain okay and when we talk about as a when we talk about a VPN uh, uh, setup, so creating a VPN tunnel between gateway is made easy to another terminology which we call VPN community. Okay. And that VPN communities, you know, has these things defined. So how we configure the side-to-side -side VPN between the two gateways, 
we use you know couple of modes or uh, you know uh, topology i can say mm -hmm. for configuring that one which we call as a mesh topology and mm -hmm. another we call star topology mm -hmm. here the screen so in layman term this is a one side and this is the another side mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. this is a very uh, simple scenario where you have two gateways yeah. right consider uh, you have multiple offices okay mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, one more office to stay in uk mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a same sort of setup, and you have one more office which is in, uh, I would say, in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and likewise, there is one more setup like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. now connection between this all four side is that possible? Yeah. Yes. But for that, you have to use some sort of topology, mm -hmm. you know. So we have a topology called mesh topology, mm -hmm. where you can connect each side, okay, together, mm -hmm. without any issue. Got it. What mesh topology says, whatever the gateway you have, for that VPN community connection, mm -hmm. you can connect each and every gateway together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you initiate communication from here and mm -hmm. you want to go here, if you have some, you know, network, you can directly go via the path which is best suited to these things. I mean, how in a real world, the different office are together, I mean connected together. So we can you now have this sort of setup, which we call mesh topology. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, I, I am just, you know, uh, not going point to point wise, just I wanted you to, you know, understand uh, these terms, yep. how the connection and everything works. No uh, that's why I am just, you know, bringing each and every you know, important point together on the one place so that uh, you should know that, okay, this is how the setup looks like. Yeah. Okay. So one of the requirements is, uh, is that you have to connect each and every gateway together and you need to have those communication going from one gateway to another, from there, from there, you know, everything should be uh, seamlessly connected without any issue. Okay. And the security impose. For that, you do this mesh topology. You got my point? Yeah. Or is, uh, I can uh, use some other approach to explain it. No, I got it. Mesh topology is like uh, you have redundancy. You can, um, if one goes down, so there's multiple. It's not centrally managed. It's all of them are managed individually, like multiple connections to different gateways. So uh, it's not something like one goes down, something will you know uh, come up. Uh -huh. Because uh, if we talk about the you know load balancing or high availability in VPNs, mm -hmm. uh, then we can you know talk about that term. How we can you know configure uh, say between two sides. Okay. Uh, if one say you have a two gateways here like this mm -hmm. and you have a same sort of vpn connection between you if one fail or another will up so that is a different scenario oh, okay here what we are talking here we are talking how we interconnect different location okay so one of the your requirement is that you have four offices in the uh -huh. world uh -huh. and you want those four offices to be connected to each other you know uh -huh. And there should be no restriction between, you know, uh, gateway-wise. 
Oh, I can able to connect here. 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 There will be no, uh, no constraint. Okay. Oh. So mostly nowadays we use mesh topology for the VPN connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I explain the mesh topology first. Got it. And then there is something called star topology. Okay. Yeah. This is how you can you know, uh, set up VPN, mm -hmm. right, in a checkpoint world. Mm -hmm. So the style topology have a certain limitation, certain constraint, which are, for example, you are at the Dallas now, mm -hmm. okay, this is your gateway, and you have the other gateways, you know, located into say one is in India, one is in Japan, one is in, you know, some uh, other uh, country, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Now, with the style topology, what you can deploy, you can have the VPN between this, these two gateways. Mm -hmm. so this is the main gateway, which we call as a central gateway. Okay. And mm -hmm. this gateways which are, you know, uh, hanging, you know, towards the uh, central gateway, we call it uh, uh, satellite gateway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Satellite gateways are the gateways which have the ability to do the VPN tunnel with the central gateway only likewise here 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 now i'll tell you the practical example where we will use this so say uh yours you uh at the dallas location and here you have a certain important web servers mm -hmm. okay which need to be accessible by all the other locations for example here is india here is Japan, here is UK, here is South Africa, for example. Mm -hmm. So all these countries, uh, uh, whatever the network you have behind, mm -hmm. they have a common requirement to access this, mm -hmm. these servers. Mm -hmm. Okay. For that, you will use this arrangement. We call it star topology. So what will happen? This guy will have the connection with this guy. Similarly, this guy, uh, this guy, this guy, they will have the connection between tunnel to this guy okay, and will be accessed from here. Okay. okay. And if you have a future requirement where you need to have the communication between, say, this guy and this guy, this guy and this guy, depending on the requirement, whatever it is, you can enable that communication from this central gateway. Hmm. There is a dependency that you need to have the communication from the central gateway. So whatever the packet will come, it will always come from here. And if you have tunnel configure for the other location, then it will, from here, it will go to that location. Oh, okay. From here it will come, it will go to this location. But always a central gateway community. Okay, makes sense. That means if your central gateway go down, Everything then down. you will be lose connection between all the gateways. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So this sort of arrangement we also call hub and spoke. Mm. Of course, you see that Right? Yep. You following me? Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So consider this is your central gateway and uh, this is your satellite gateway. Okay. Here I'm just giving you a gateway, for example. Mm -hmm. So if the connection between this this gateway will go on, you have will be having the issue. So to have the solution for this you will have one more gateway here. Okay? Okay. 
and you will have the tunnel between this gateway and this gateway. Mm -hmm. In a mesh way. Okay. I'm just giving an example how you can protect this sort of scenario. Mm -hmm. And you can do the rest of the gateway as a satellite gateways. Got it. So whenever one of the gateway got fell, it will, you know, the other gateway will get up and there will be no problem. There will be connectivity. Got it. Any questions so far? Uh, no. So this is a mixed. Uh, well, not a really mixed. It's still uh, uh, hub and spoke, except the yeah. hub is got a re redundancy. Yeah. Got it. And now let's understand how you can have the communication between these gateways. You can, I mean, this is kind of configuration part. Mm -hmm. So the connection between this gateway and this gateway is based on some keys, right? Or some certificate. Okay, makes sense. So when we talk about the keys, we talk about the shared key, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when we talk about the certificate, we use self-sign or third-party trusted certificate. Mm -hmm. Right? To have the communication between these two. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? So, right. Uh, this is how site-to-site uh, uh, -site VPNs works. Okay. When uh, you configure this VPN, you have a two more terminology how you can configure this vpn so one we configure with the you know approach we call it domain based vpn uh -huh. and another approach we follow route based vpn okay okay what do you mean by domain based vpn we just have explained mm -hmm. these are the encryption domain oh and we define those into these gateways and based on the you know matching and encryption algorithms and everything what traffic we define mm -hmm. the communication happens okay the setting is like this local gateway to define your local encryption domain and also the remote encryption domain provided when you do the configuration, you will have a interoperable gateway and that interoperable gateway having these details of the remote gateway. Okay. Okay. When we do the practical things, you will see this stuff. But VPN scope is limited to the theoretical part, but I will, you know, show you uh, where, what things get configured. Do you mind uh, going through the route base one more time really quick? I didn't get Yeah, yeah, yeah. Route base, I have not explained it. Okay. Oh, you haven't. We just explained about the domain base because domain base. It, because these are behind the domain. So we consider these, uh, these which are behind the gateway, behind the peers, are domains. Right. Got it. Okay. And the route base API. Okay. So, the VPN community. Mm -hmm. so this is one VPN community, and this is another VPN community. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. It's based on the routing information. So, what we mean by routing information? We have a flexibility here to configure the protocol like OSPF. Uh -huh. Here also, we can configure the same protocol like uh -huh. OSPF. Uh -huh. You know, we can configure RAID, OSPF, whatever the, you know, best suited for your uh, organization. Uh -huh. And with that, you will, you know, have a routing in between, between the two sides. We either do a static route. If we don't go for this uh, uh, approach, you can simply create a static route or the dynamic route. This is the dynamic, you know way we can create the route and we configure the uh, the gateway using the terminology called vpn tunnel interface okay. so uh, when 
like this is a part of the uh, CCSE if we going to configure the VPN tunnel interface. Mm -hmm. uh, in VPN tunnel interface, we define whatever the communication happening between the both the tunnels here. Mm -hmm. You know, based on the uh, uh, the routing. So, uh, say internally you are organizing running OSPF, your organization from other side also running the OSPF. Uh, the traffic reaching towards the gateway uh, will be happening via OSPF and using this uh, virtual tunnel interface uh, will be, you know, protecting that traffic, you know, going from one direction to the other direction using uh, a technique called uh, VTI. I mean, there is a lot of things inside this. Uh, when we come across the uh, configuring the route based VPN, there are uh, uh, multiple use cases for that. Like why you configure the VTI, why not a domain based VPN, like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we will discuss this when we talk about the CCSC part. Okay. Okay, but for now, uh, you need to understand that the traffic is routed within the VPN community based on the routing information mm -hmm. that we got. Uh, configure on your VPN gateways, and this all uh, we use in a VPN tunnel interface when we configure the route based VPN. Okay, done. Okay, I know it's going a little bit over over, over the head because uh, uh, the concept is a uh, advanced concept. Mm -hmm. Mostly, we don't configure the tunnels using a uh, uh, route based VPN. It's because it has a lot of complexity and the limitations. So as we are using the you know routing protocols, so uh, well, how uh, encryption uh, happens and how the data will travel, uh, there are some limitations on that. So depending on the requirement, we have to see the solution if we want to configure the VPN uh, route based uh, option or not. Got it. Okay. Uh, Right. So this is what the, the, the theoretical part for the, uh, we call it a site set VPN. Okay. Now let's see about the remote access VPN. Uh, in remote access VPN, you need to have a one gateway. Okay. Sorry. And behind this gateway you will be having your encryption domains so consider these are your encryption domains okay, okay. and this is you you want to access this server from the remote location how you can access either you will do a remote access vpn or you can do ssl vpn depending on the you know configuration and the requirement what you have mm -hmm. And the access between these two also or a tunnel. So when we define the remote access VPN in this gateway, uh, we'll define a terminology like uh, how you, how the IPs you know get access to you, uh, with what method. So we have a different method here. For example, one of the method is the office mode, where uh, we define the you know uh, your IP addresses inside the gateways mm -hmm. and whenever you connect to this gateway via remotely mm -hmm. IP from this uh, uh, definitions what we have defined mm -hmm. one of the IP addresses is you know allocated to you mm -hmm. and then the communication happens over the private tunnel mm -hmm. so it is as simple as simple as that how you can connect to the uh, the other side mm -hmm. but Provided you need to have this uh, tunnel in place, which is uh, uh, provide you the security in terms of you know accessing the details. Uh, in remote access VPN, uh, it's a fundamental is as simple as that. Uh, you are the remote uh, user or a PC, and you want to access your internal networks. How you can access that? The main part here is the configuration only and how you can assign these pri uh, private IP addresses, uh, how it goes to the your uh, outside PC, 
how those IPs get assigned to as a uh, as a internal IP address to this PC. And once that is done, this PC is act like you are one of the internal PC. So this PC, the firewall will consider this is one of the internal PC or internal IP or internal network PC. Why? Because you are assigning this oh. internal IP address to this PC. Okay. So that's why uh, there will be no restrictions that happen between these uh, uh, PCs. I mean, so, yeah. between these two. In real world, you basically have both because side to side is from like two main corporate offices, but then the users who are remote will be using remote access VPN to connect to the sites, right? So is that is that how it works on the real? Yes. Okay. So consider right now you are, if you go to the office, yep. okay, you just open your system and you directly connect to the, say, one of the, your UK location, mm -hmm. okay, or the uh, Israel location. Mm -hmm. You're directly able to connect to that. Why? Because you have the connection over there, like your one office is one side and those offices are down the side. So you don't have to go there and, you know, enable your uh, VPN client, you put the details and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that because it's already, you know, syncing in between. Mm -hmm. and the connection is already there. So that is a, you know, a flexibility what we have with the side to side. Okay. Because both sides are configured at once. Yeah. And what, once that is done, you will be, you know, all good go. Yeah. But with the remote access, you have a dependency every time you need to dial in those username and password uh, to connect to the gateway. Right? Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to learn in the VPN? Anything in your mind? This is what I have for you for the VPN. Um, is there something called Haggle? Yeah. Um, I'm, I've always got confused with that thing. Haggle, see, this is the uh, mnemonics uh, I have given, for uh -huh. example. Uh -huh. or you will give whatever the mnemonics you whatever want to give. It's not the terminology which is actually used in VPN. Oh. So as Hagel start from H, H is for the hashing. Uh -huh. What hashing method you have in the real world, if you search, you have a SHA MD5, for example. Uh -huh. Why we use hashing, you know, to protect the data with the signature, uh, with the uh, some sort of uh, confidentiality. Right. Okay. Like that. Okay. So A is for the availability like that. G is for you know whatever the so I have a, a perfect video for you. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have seen my that video. Uh -huh. I'll I'll just give you the link. Oh okay. I have explained these details in very in Oh detail. really? Okay. Yeah, I'll just give you the link. Give me one sec. If you look my channel, you will get all the details. I think I see a one VPN. Uh, so if you see this VPN troubleshooting video, yeah, I'll just play for you the haggle part. Okay, got it. What if you can grab the best career opportunities in cloud computing today? Welcome to our post. Phase two also has. Fifi, Hellman, packet and communication between gateway and three from the remote Let's understand what these packets contains. I key phase one. Yeah. So this is how the angle stand for. This mm -hmm. is the you know. Uh, 
when you actually set up VPNs, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, when you set up a VPN, we have uh, uh, protocols like uh, ISA, KMP, and uh, IKEA in between. Mm -hmm. So internal key exchange protocol. And when we talk about the IKE internal key exchange protocol, how IKE works, you know, what parameters it takes to the, you know, uh, the other side, how you can do the encryption and everything. That is what I have explained with this. This is a terminology, you know, okay. for this. Okay, okay, this is not a terminology which is defined somewhere which you need to use. Uh -huh. It's just the mnemonics given for this thing. So H stands for the hashing, A stands for the authentication, uh, G stands for defilement group, L stands for lifetime, E stands for encryption. Uh, how this thing works, uh, if you look, if you see this video, you will also, you know, come to know, because I have explained each and everything in uh -huh. the very detail here. So this is a CCSE part, uh -huh. uh, you can configure the VP antenna and if you see, I have explained each and every packet, like where you see what details, what packet having, what uh, content, how you can troubleshoot and everything. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it, it's in very depth. Uh -huh. So I can generally give those explanations during the CCAC part. Oh, okay, got it. But if you want this in advance from my video, I'll just give the link. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Okay. So okay. So the setting up and breaking down and um, troubleshooting the VPN is that CCSE part. Yes. Oh. Okay. Setting setting up and uh, that we can you know we can quickly look that there is a no uh, much thing there. But uh, <clears throat> if you only look for the setting up and you will not perform the you know. Uh, uh, VPN things, uh, there is no use at all. Yeah. So that's why I kept those details intact uh, during the, you know, at one go, uh, you will be setting the things and then you will be, you know, performing uh, the labs and you will be, you know, doing all the in-depth level of VPN troubleshooting with the packet, uh, you know, uh, flow, which packet comes, what, and how you can troubleshoot if you see this particular error, that particular error, which packet, you know, you need to look for that error, which packet you need to look this way, how you can grab those packets out of your firewall, run into that tool called IKEA view, and from there, how you can, you know, give the customer uh, uh, that, okay, this is what happening in your environment, you have to check this, you have to check that, you have to, you know, uh, do this sort of modification. There is a lot of things, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, provided that you need to, Start with everything, uh, like uh, start with the all those configuration need to be in place. Then you have to break those things, and then one by one, one by one, you will see the details. Okay, so you have to that will be the benefited part. If I give you the just setup purpose, yeah. Okay, this is where the VPN setup. This is where the this setup. You can get it that from the admin guide. There are the any anything what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the simple steps, but the actual purpose is behind that so that is what uh, i covers in ccs it's, it's like a, a complete uh, eight hours per session we have to do only the vpns mm. but basics are same what you mm -hmm. just explained Sorry. right okay so, so, the, so basics of vpn like what what What's inside a VPN? Like what a VPN terminologies are, is what covered here. Yeah. Okay, got it. Side to side remote access, encryption domain. Okay, so that's what we cover here. Okay. Um, so, but because this VPN is a very vast, very, uh, very in depth. Terminal, uh, like a concept. 
yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it has a see concept is very simple. If we uh, configure the VPN, we have to configure using this topology. Okay, Correct. concept is simple, but you know, if something you know went wrong, okay, then to make the tunnel up again is difficult. Task. Yeah, and looking for those details is difficult task, but having you know uh, uh, understanding on the these tools uh -huh. like a uh, iKey view yep. tool uh, your life become easy okay got Generally, it. this sort of packet flow you will not get anywhere mm. from checkpoint they have this iKey view tool you, you will see uh, you know each and every packets got it Example, if you come to if you watch this video, uh -huh. the demand for stack developers is at the in the industry. But how can you most of it? So IP address which you so for example, if you see this slide, this is how the packet looks, okay. So here, if you see, this is a, uh, let me grab my pen. So this is the one side, example. Okay. Okay, this is my, uh, say, Dallas side, uh, external IP address. Uh-huh. Okay. And I have a, a peer connection with the other side, okay. Right now, I am looking at my side and I'm doing the packet troubleshooting. Uh -huh. So this is the first packet what I have, you know, sent to the other side. So this is one side, this is another side. Uh -huh. There are in total six packet exchange during the phase one, uh -huh. okay, and three packet during the phase two. So okay. phase, we call it as a uh, main mode, uh -huh. and phase two, we call it as a quick mode. Okay. okay. So in first packet, what data you will see, you will observe from this IQ view tool. If you see oh. that, put this into the IQ view tool. So uh -huh. first packet, you know, uh, it if you look into the particular things like a security as association and inside that, if you see the what transform set is passing from your side to the other side, mm -hmm. you will see, okay, you have used the AES, uh, CB, AES algorithm, you uh -huh. have explained where the SHA use for the hashing, you have used the preset key, and this is the DC element group, and this is lifetime and everything configured. Oh, so you can use this to see yeah, the other right. side if there's a mismatch of any communication or settings. Right. right. So if there is any mismatch, you can you know uh, locate it from here. Yeah. And you know what? The best part of the checkpoint is that here itself, you know, it will give you arrow. For example, cross arrow. Uh huh. The first packet is not working. Uh, so that means you have to check these details for, to the other side. Okay, I am seeing this. Do you also configure the same thing? Makes sense. Okay. Like that, the significance for the second packet also. So for second packet, yeah, the, it's a details from the receiving side. So you don't have to ask them the thing if you see the second packet. And here also you will see what configuration they have in you know, your second packet like mm -hmm. what algorithms they are used as you know like that like they have a third packet fourth packet six packet there's a different significance of this and how you can you know see the things oh that's the six packets you were talking about uh, yeah. Main oh, yeah oh got it so you each packet have a different significance you will see somewhere like this cross you have to pick that packet okay this packet is showing cross, that means this packet is having issue. So with respect to that packet, you need to do the troubleshoot. That uh, makes so uh, much sense. Seeing that is is what is really puts uh, puts the whole thing in perspective. But you know, looking into this all things, you need to have everything in place. You need to break the things and that. So that's why I kept these details, you know, you know, the CCSE part. Yeah, that's right. You know, because only configuring the thing will not help you because you can get it those uh, steps from anywhere. 
Mm -hmm. I don't have to specifically give you those details. That makes sense. These details you will not get from anywhere. It has to be uh, uh, taken by the uh, some admins that mm -hmm. how he looks for the things. Okay, got it. If you see this video also, mm -hmm. uh, you will get a lot of details on this, like how it works. But practically, uh, when we look for the CCSA, we'll see this. Got it. You, uh, that was good. Okay, so and maybe you have seen these videos or not, but I'll urge you to go ahead and see. Uh huh. Uh, initially, I have made a uh, few very important videos. I have Palo Alto series also. Oh, nice. You don't look long because you are not working on Palo. So, uh, this guy. Check one. Okay. I'll give you the link also. Uh huh. Back in inspection state, this is using it for the monitor. Oh, yeah. This is not something uh, we discuss it. Uh -huh. Go on those site and you know run those commands. I mean, uh, you can. If you see the start, let's understand. This is how uh, what is the process works. When the inbound package, packet flow, firewall, which process come in the picture, when packet the scene, arrives at the security gateways, and, uh, how packet the packet intercepted by the. the Nick so in that the card you know? on the inbound. Mm. Not over you level. Once okay. packet intercepted so by the Nick, the firewall. This is all a part of the CCSA course. So, even if you follow my videos, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a base. You will be able to deliver a lot of things. Mm. Provided it's up to you. I mean, how you want to proceed. Yeah, I see. So, uh, that is what we talked about the VPN, the introduction part. Got it. Uh, what we will do, we'll have a five minutes break. Okay. And after that, we'll uh, see your AD lab. We'll yeah. explain something on the AD identity and we'll uh, Okay, sounds good. All right. All right, then. I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you.